What if you could launch your own SaaS business, charge a monthly fee, or add a nice web interface on top of your AI automation products, all without writing a single line of code yourself? Sounds impossible? Let me show you how. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to build your own software product, even if you have zero coding experience. Whether you want to create a standalone SaaS that generates revenue or integrate it into your AI automations, this is a game changer. By the end of this video, you'll have the exact steps to go from idea to a profitable software product. So here's the plan. And first, I'm going to explain the problem that I ran into that made me start to explore Replit and Bolt.new. These tools can build software from scratch just by describing what you want. I'll test both of these services with the same prompt to see which one does better. And then after the app is built, we'll deploy it so we can actually distribute it to our customers. We'll explain the why, the prompts to build the software. We'll build the software in both of these tools. We'll compare the experiences and deploy the app. If you felt left behind because you don't know how to code, if you're overwhelmed on how to get started, this video is for you. We're about to save you years of learning that it would normally take to build something just like this. Let's get into it. So I got here myself building my own app with AI because I sell a product here. It's called the Content Engine Database, and it uses this tool called Frame.io, which is really cool. It allows you to review your videos and also to provide feedback at specific timelines in the video. You can draw on the screen and make comments. I can add that into the timeline. And it's gonna save that comment. My video editor can come, can click on this, can see the comment and can also see the visual notes on the video and they can make those corrections. However, the software can get pretty expensive because it charges you per team member. It also has limited storage considering how much space videos take up. So you're always having to clean up and delete those videos and then they're gone. But beyond that, they actually released a new version that broke their API and they don't have a replacement for that API yet. So any customer that starts a new account right now, believe it or not, cannot access their API, which is just crazy to me. And they will not allow you to downgrade to the new version while they fix the API. So I got to thinking, could I just use one of these tools to build my own solution? So I got started and about 15 minutes later, I had a working solution. So now let's go ahead and build out the prompts that will describe the software that we need to build and then we'll actually build it out. So to build that prompt, I just went over to ChatGPT and this is the prompt that I came up with. I'm using an AI code generator and I want you to help me make clear specs that I can send using some details below. Make a verbose spec using the contents below. And then I just simply said, I need to create a video feedback tool using video.js. It just so happened that I knew that there was a tool called video.js that would help me out. And then I just said, I should be able to provide a video URL. Then it should let me play back the video with a timeline and make comments at various points. Keep in mind, we'll be using a public URL for the video and it should play in the browser. And then I mentioned that there's no database required. And then I added another requirement, make it so if I click on one of the comments that I add, it will set the play bar on the video to the timestamp recorded in the comment, thereby replicating this feature here so that if I click on this specific comment, it takes me back to the timeline where I made that comment. Now I could have just copied these notes directly into the prompt here, but I knew that if I were to ask ChatGPT to write out the specs in a more verbose way with clear headlines and specs and all of the directions that I provided it and all the expected behavior and the constraints, I just knew the results would be a lot better. So that's why I did it this way. All right, so now that we have our prompt, we can go ahead and continue on and actually build out the software in both Replit and Bolt. All right, so now I'm gonna jump back to ChatGPT. I'm going to copy the specs. I'm going to jump to Replit and I'm gonna drop in these specs here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start building. Then I'll jump over to bolt.new and I'll do the same. We'll go ahead and continue. So now we can actually watch both of these apps build it live. Replit here is thinking about what I said and reviewing the message. And it looks like bolt.new is already starting to write out some code. It's really fascinating to see the API build all of this out, especially given that I know how much work goes into building this all manually from scratch. Looks like we already have something here. I'm gonna jump back to Replit to see how it's doing here. It looks like it's got a question for me. It's asking if I want any additional features, like adding support for private video URLs, enable categories and tags. None of this is really anything that I really want right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve the plan and get started. So now it's gonna go ahead and start to build out everything as well. Let's jump back over to bolt.new and it looks like it's ready for the URL. So I'm gonna jump over here. I have a video here that is hosted on the Google storage platform. I'm just gonna copy that in right here and we'll go ahead and load the video. So here we go, we have the video here. Looks like we can go ahead and play it. Let's test that out. Looks like there was a little bug there. Let's try that again. 
So it looks like we're seeing a little bug here. I'll go ahead and just type in what's happening. So here it should go ahead and try to fix that issue. It's going to go ahead and start writing the code again. Let's jump back to Replit and see how it's doing. So this just popped up. It looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and put in a URL. We'll load the video. Here's the video. Let's go ahead and play it. So notice this one didn't have an error playing it. Let's go back to bolt.new. Let's see if they were able to fix the issue, load the video. Let's go ahead and play it. Oh, still the same issue. So, so far it looks like Replit is winning. So now let's go ahead and add a comment here. This would be a message I'd give to my video editor. Let's go ahead and add that. So now we have that comment here. Now let's see if I go ahead and skip ahead here. If I come back, will it go back? So it's not actually going back to that timestamp when I actually click on the comment, which was one of the criteria that I gave in my prompt. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask them to correct that. So I said, it seems to be working, except that when I click on the comment, it doesn't automatically adjust the video back to the timestamp of the comment. So we'll give it that feedback and then it will go ahead and try to fix that bug for us. I'm going to jump back to bolt.new. I'm going to go ahead and say, seems to get stuck again. When I play the video, it almost instantly stops. And now, of course, I'm on the free version, so I just hit the rate limit. Please upgrade to keep chatting. Before I pay that money, let's go see if we can get it to work on Replit. So it looks like it's finishing up. It's got the screenshot here. It should load up pretty quick. Let's put in that video URL. Let's load the video, put in a test comment. Let's move to somewhere else in the timeline. Oh, and now if I click that, it went right back. So now if we come up here, testing again. So now this comment here is at one minute and 13 seconds. And then this one here is at two seconds. So now if I click on two seconds and come back here, I can toggle back and forth between these two places in the video timeline. So it looks like Replit here is the clear winner, at least in this particular example. It could be that Bolt is better at other types of applications, but since Replit won in this particular case, I'm not going to upgrade because I'd just like to save that money. So now I'm going to come back up to Replit and because this did work, I went ahead and upgraded so I could deploy the app. So let's go ahead and deploy it. Now it's asking us what kind of configuration we want for the application. This is a very, very simple app. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this and bring everything back down again. We don't need three machines running this. I'm going to go ahead and approve and configure the build settings. It's just asking us what domain we want to use for our app and a few other options here. I'm just going to leave those as default and let's go ahead and just deploy. So this is obviously going to take a bit of time to process. We'll come back after this is done. looks like it has completed the build and now it's bundling that up to actually promote it to the web. It finished that bundle and now it's pushing it out to the web on the internet and now it's complete. So I should be able to click on this link and actually see my app live. There it is. Let's go ahead and put in the video URL again. We'll load that video. You can play it. We'll pause it here, test one, and then we'll come over here, do test two. And now we can flip back and forth between the two comments. And now we can collaborate with our video editor on this particular video, all without having to get a subscription to frame.io. And if you're an AI entrepreneur, make sure to jump into the no code architects community. It's an engaged group. We're in here solving people's problems and helping them get started and build out their AI automation businesses to help you unlock multiple six figures with the power of automation and AI inside the classroom. You can get access to a make an Airtable beginner course. You can get access to all of my automation templates for building out content, managing social media, building faceless videos, other AI and no code projects, like how to build your own rag system. And I personally host calls almost every single day where you can get tech support from me and I can help you build out your AI automation business. We even have expert workshops this week. The VP of product at make.com is going to come talk to us. I hope to see you in the community either way. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.